Hello, it's Keith here, and this is the fourth in my Hello World series, in which we're going over various classic systems and learning how to create a super simple Hello World message on the screen, how to compile that, put it into a disk image, and getting it running on the emulators that we would want to use. Now, this is aimed at people who want to get started, but have some ideas of how they want to get things going. And so rather than using my development tools with the built-in examples there, you want to really get things from scratch and just work things out yourself, which is great. So I wanted to make this, these videos available to you so that you could have a look and see, and hopefully it will give you a good starting point to learn things on your own, but not make all the mistakes that basically I made when I was trying to figure out what tools to use and things. Anyway, let's start and have a look at the example we're running today. So first of all, we're gonna do a very simple hello world. We're just gonna show the message hello world on screen. So let's fire it up and have a look at it. So you can see here, hello world 323, and that's the message we've got here at the bottom of the screen. Now, how do we actually do this? Well, when we want to run a program on the Sam Coupe, with the code I'm using at least, we're gonna to have to start our program with hexadecimal 8000 here. So that's the origin of our code, and that's where the first byte goes into memory. Now, let's have a look at the actual code itself. Well, the main function within this is the print character routine. It's very similar to the Spectrum version. Again, we're using RST16 or RST2, just depending on how your software, your assembler works, but it's RST16 with VASM, which is what I use. So this will print our character to the screen. We then extend this to a print string routine. We look through a string and, and keep printing every character until we get to a character 255, which is the end of our string. So this function will do the print string. We also have a new line function here, which will just start a new line on the screen. We do that by printing a character 13 to the screen. Now, after our org 8000 here, we're loading our message into HL, calling that print string function, and then we're disabling interrupts and halting, which will actually kind of crash the processor. Well, why are we doing that? Well, in this very simple example, if I take the disable halt out, you can see we've got an okay message here. What actually happened was that um, the program completed, but then it clears the screen. So um, not, not the greatest thing there for our beginner's example. So I've, for simplicity, I've disabled and halted there. Now, you could, of course, also just put a press a key function in there, but that's beyond what I wanted to do for this super simple example. Okay, well, that's how we can create a program. We can compile it, of course, we need to do that. Now, we use VASM in these examples. You can use something else if you prefer. And we need to specify the source file, which is the ASM you just saw, a destination file, which is a binary. And then I'm using a few other options here. I'm defining some symbols here, which are part of the monitor tools. You don't need them for the hello world, but the monitor tools we're gonna to look at next, you do need them for. And then I'm just outputting a listing, which you don't need, but if you have problems, you can see the actual bytes that the code is compiling to, and sometimes you can spot problems. So that's how we do that. Now, we'll have a look at how to create the disk in just a moment. Let's have a quick look at those monitor tools next, though. So the monitor tools are an extension that we created in the multi-platform series. These allow us to dump parts of the system memory to screen and also the registers. So if you're getting started programming the Sam Coupe, and for example, maybe you're trying to read from the keyboard and you're reading in, but you want to see what's actually going on, what the reading is resulting in, or maybe your loops aren't working correctly and you need to keep an eye on that loop counter and just check nothing else is changing it. Well, you can use the monitor to do that. And if your program code is maybe malfunctioning, maybe you need to check it's not getting corrupted. So you can dump areas of the memory to the screen. So monitor will just show the system registers and then this will show the actual memory and we're showing from hexadecimal 8000 and we're showing 32 bytes. So if we just run this here, you can see our hello world message. And now we've got the registers dumped here and then we've got a dump of some of our memory just here. And that's what we can do to see how the system is running. Okay, so how do we actually go about creating a disk? Well, there is a tool that is quite useful called Discman, and this is known as the SimCoupe Disk Manipulator by Andrew Collier. Uh, this is a tool you can get online, but I actually use a modified version. Now, I've not changed too much about it, and you're welcome to use the original. Now, you can see my modified version here, and this is basically what you would typically see with the program. You get a, a interface here where you can specify options, and you can create new disks, add files to disks, and you can save those disks back to the system. Now this program works absolutely fine. And as I say, I've not really changed any of the code with regard to actually handling the disk images. The problem with the, this interface is that if you're gonna use this, then every time you change your program, you're gonna have to go in and you're gonna have to mess with the disk image 
in that command line tool. And that's not going to be very helpful for us when we're going to be developing and running our program lots of times. So what I've done is I've made a slight tweak to it. And rather than reading from the keyboard, it's now able to read from a text file on our disk. So we can effectively script the modification of our disk using my modified version. And you can get the modified version in my devs tool download. Now, when we use the modified version with a script file, our key presses are exactly being passed through to the interface of the software. So for example, if we want to press an N key, you can see there's an N here. If we want to press an S key, there's an S here. And if we want to do an enter, for example, to actually sort of complete the input when we're specifying a program name, you can see there's a new line in the script file. So you do need to be very strict with regards to this script file. It's a very crude change I made, to be honest, because it's a C program. I'm not very good at C. It's been a long time since I've used it. So if this is how we can script it. And this is what I use to create the programs and what we run today. So the script we're doing here is we created a new disk image and that's what this N does. Then we want to save a file to the disk and that's what this S does. Then we specify a source file name. And so we're adding the program from build Sam and that's the program we compiled earlier. And then what we need to do is we need to specify a new file name. But first we need to press enter to confirm that, that input. And the file name for the disk is going to be auto go. This is a special file name because the Sam Coupe will run this automatically when it starts up. So that's the best file name for your first file. You can see here in this script, we're actually loading a second file, a music file and saving that as music.bin. But we don't need that for today's example. Finally, we need to save the disk image to our Windows operating system. So we send a W for write and we specify the file name and that will save the program and that will finish our job. So there we go. That's how we modify our disk image. We create a new one every time, add our files to it and then save it to the disk. We want, if we've got that disk image, we can now use that with our emulator. We can just specify the disk image we want to load on the command line for Sim Coupe. Well, we saw our program running earlier and we were just stopping the processor. But what happens if we return to basic? We might want to do a few more things after that. So let's run our program again. And you saw the output there and then we've returned back to basic. Well, what about if we need to see the contents of that disk? Well, we could do a DIR command for that. You can see the contents of the disk there. And you can see our auto go program, which, as I said, is automatically started by the Sam Coupe. But what if we'd given it a different name? Maybe we'd given it the name disk or start or something and it doesn't start automatically. Well, we could create a basic program to do that for us or something, or we could manually load it now. So let's see how we can load that. All we do is we type load and then the name of the file, auto go, and then code, and then 32768. Why 32768? Because that's the decimal version of hexadecimal 8000 here. So we're loading into the address 32768. Now this will actually automatically start because of the way I've built that file using that disk editor earlier. You saw it just run very quickly there again, unfortunately clearing the screen because that's the way it seems to work. Now, what about if we've got a program in memory and we want to run that memory address? Well, we can do this with the rather odd command randomize user and then the address 32768, once again, hexadecimal 8000. Now the way this works is user says, to call that address, the user function, three to, uh, memory address 32768. But all of these functions return a value, and we want to just swallow that value. We don't want to see it. And so the randomize command is taking that numeric return and just ignoring it, basically. So you saw the program run just there. So a combination of those commands, the load command and then the randomize command, could be used in a basic file if you need to do some initialization, maybe loading multiple files in memory or something, before your program starts up. And there we go. That's what we can do. So there we go. That's a quick introduction to the Sam Coupe, how to get Hello World running. And if you're looking to do some programming, maybe this is going to help you out. Now, all of this is available for download in my website in the source of 7-zip. You can see all of these Hello Worlds in this series. And of course, if you're interested in Z80 Assembly, I've got a full tutorial series on programming Z80. And if you're interested in the Sam Coupe, I've got a series on that as well, which we go into more detail about specific tasks like drawing graphics, making sounds and reading in from the joystick and keyboard and things. So please have a look at those. And if you've liked this, please like and subscribe to my channel because that helps me out a lot. Anyway, thanks for watching today and goodbye.